Fox 17 News starts now with a breaking news alert. Good morning. Thanks for choosing Fox 17 News to start your Saturday. I am Lauren Edwards and we start this morning with some breaking news out of Kalamazoo. Nine people have been shot and good morning. What do we know at this time? Michael, thank you so much for gathering all of this information and for being there. Lauren, absolutely. Good morning. We don't know a whole lot at this point. What we do know, nine people shot after a gathering here on Church Street in Kalamazoo. A neighbor has told us that upwards of 100 people were gathered between this stretch of Church Street from Bessie to Lulu. There were people gathered out here late into the night and then shortly after 2.15 around, or shortly after 2 a.m., around 2.15 a.m., shots were fired, police called, they responded to this area. They find two people with gunshots here at the scene. They bring them to the hospital, say those are non-life-threatening injuries. They are expected to survive. But as they're investigating the scene here on Church Street, seven more people show up to Kalamazoo area hospitals. So that is nine people shot. Now what the police had said maybe three hours ago at this point was that people were still in stable condition. Now we are trying to get updates on their conditions to see how those folks are doing. But at this time, at least in terms of the latest update we've been able to get, no suspect has been identified. No suspect has been arrested. Nine people uh, shot and injured. But of course, we are trying to find any possible updates we can. But as far as we know, this happened after a public gathering here on Church Street. That neighbor telling us there were people all through the street, uh, through this two block area shots end up being fired and that's how this thing progressed but we are trying to find more updates for you and tell you how those nine people are doing until then live from kalamazoo michael martin fox 17 news and we have a chance for some severe weather rolling into west michigan this weekend let's bring in our chief meteorologist kevin craig to see what he's been tracking Kevin, what can you tell us? Well, uh, radar has been busy this morning, especially across the southern portion of our viewing area, Lauren, where we've had some strong to marginally severe thunderstorms there. Good morning, everybody. This takes you down all the way down uh, into the extreme southeastern portion of our viewing area. Branch County, cold water. I got to believe there's a lot of people smiling when they're seeing that rainfall. But across Berrien and Cass, even St. Joseph County, there's been some torrential rainfall down there this morning with thunderstorms going over the same area. This is what we're talking about. There's there's Berrien, there's Cass, there's St. Joe. Branch is right here. We were right about in this location there. Most of our area is dry, but as you get into those counties south of the N-84 corridor, these are just general rain showers. I drew, uh, I drew a thick red line where the, uh, where the uh, uh, images for the, uh, uh, I lost the train of thought there for the state line is what I want to say. It's been a very busy morning here with what's been going on. On the other side of that line is where the stronger and severe thunderstorms will stay, I think, for most of today. We just have general rain showers now across Berrien, Cass, St. Joe, and into branch counties where you saw in the cold water area as well. There is another cluster of some storms out here that will continue to dive to the south and east and still may come over these same areas. They may even hit places like uh, Van Buren and Kalamazoo County. So we'll continue to monitor that. But our real severe weather threat is not really this morning, even though we've had a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings issued. It's more so for tonight. These storms have been forming out here and then diving to the south and east just along the curvature of that warm front. Our temperatures range uh, in the low, even mid 70s out there right now. 76 in Kalamazoo and Battle Creek. Here's your Saturday planner. Well, uh, it will not rain all day. As a matter of fact, we're going to see skies break out into mostly sunny to partly cloudy skies. Lower to mid 80s by noon. Highs topping out around 90 degrees today and that will likely help to fuel with all that heat, energy, and moisture in the atmosphere. Another round of some strong to severe thunderstorms except ones coming in this evening and overnight may be a little more widespread and there may be uh, some uh, up to 60, 70 mile per hour wind gusts there and some large hail as well. We were only in the first threat category but now that's been upgraded for tonight to the level three category. That's an enhanced threat there for the reasons of why I just mentioned, and probably anything after about 8, 9, 10 o'clock this evening and going through the overnight hours. We'll talk more about that part of the forecast and the rest 
of your West Michigan forecast, Lauren. That's coming up in just a few minutes. The Michigan Department of Civil Rights is filing formal discrimination charges against the Grand Rapids Police Department. These charges are in response to two separate complaints. The department adds they're currently investigating 28 complaints against GRPD. Fox 17's Matt Wickos has the latest on this developing story. There's not much we know at this time about the charges. The department plans to announce them at a press conference Monday morning. A spokesperson says they tried to get these two complaints resolved, but they didn't reach an agreement. The police department has dealt with civil rights issues before, one including Yalar Ramos Gomez, an American-born citizen and former Lance Corporal in the Marines who served in Afghanistan. A police captain investigated for his actions that led to Gomez getting detained by ICE, even though he had a U.S. passport and a driver's license showing he was a veteran. Another issue was the case of Anasi Hodges, an 11-year-old girl put in handcuffs as police attempted to find a 41-year-old white woman who was a suspect in a stabbing. The department held meetings in 2019. They heard from 80 people. The city sent us this statement. The city of Grand Rapids has been fully cooperative and engaged with the Michigan Department of Civil Rights since at least May 2019 when investigations began. The city has been in constant communication with the department, though there are changes of leadership and transitions in staff handling cases. The city has received two matters this week from, from MDCR and a hearing has been requested for each matter. The city intends to respond and attend all hearings as provided by the MTCR administrative rules. GRPD did update its policies and procedures back in the fall of 2020. Also, on Tuesday, Chief Eric Winstrom is planning to discuss his observations and intentions for moving the department forward in improving public safety. In the newsroom. Michigan Supreme Court says that fingerprinting people without probable cause or a warrant is unconstitutional. That ruling stems from a case in Grand Rapids involving two separate incidents with two black teenagers in 2011 and 2012. They were stopped by police, photographed and fingerprinted, but were not charged with crimes. The ACLU's lawyer argued that the act of fingerprinting someone should be considered a search and the Fourth Amendment protects us from searches without probable cause. Michigan Supreme Court agreed. The policy of photographing and fingerprinting people just on the side of the road who haven't been charged with a crime, that needs to go in the dustbin of history. It was a threat to personal privacy. It was an example of racial profiling, of police overreach. And now it's time to reimagine policing and center the needs of the communities that officers are sworn to serve and protect. The city of Grand Rapids responding via email, writing, quote, the city of Grand Rapids has received the decision as currently reviewing what its next steps may be. As this ruling now requires additional consideration for lower courts, we will withhold further public comment as each case works towards a final resolution. On the lower court, now expected to weigh in on the department's database of those fingerprints collected without probable cause, along with any possible damages that should be awarded. We do want to note that the city says it ended print and photo procedures in December 2015. Fox 17 checked the department's handbook. The current policy says an officer can take fingerprints without consent when it's believed that the individual has committed a crime. The individual cannot provide reliable identification due to quote physical incapacitation or defect mental incapacitation or defect or death and immediate identification is needed or when there's a valid court order. Now this week, Governor Gretchen Whitmer signed a package of bills raising the age limit to buy tobacco products in Michigan. It's gone from 18 to 21 years old, bringing Michigan in line with the federal age requirement. Darren Cunningham has more on the penalties non-compliant tobacco shops may face and the public health impact. I spoke with a cardiologist who says anything that can be done to decrease a young person's exposure to tobacco products is a good thing because the earlier a person starts, the harder it is to quit. We've been huge advocates of this for a long time. The legislature has just been behind it. Today, Governor Whitmer signed legislation raising the minimum age a person can buy tobacco from 18 to 21. That's now in sync with the federal age limit. Also, the law stops anyone under 21 years old from setting foot in a tobacco shop and the age limit applies to tobacco sales through the mail. Any store caught selling tobacco products to anyone under 21 would face up to a $100 fine for the first offense, up to $500 for the second time, and up to $2,500 each time after that. Dr. Shrukri David, 
chair of cardiovascular services for Ascension Michigan says it's about time considering the documented detriment of tobacco use. Having lung cancer and a tracheostomy and a thoracotomy and lung resections or open heart surgery or coronary angioplasties or amputations where you have to use prostheses from, from tobacco use. If that doesn't make the case, in addition to that, David says tobacco use is a leading cause for heart disease, heart attacks, stroke, and vascular disease. A healthier population, I mean, obviously there are other contributors to vascular disease, diabetes, hypertension, uh, obesity, etc. cetera, uh, but tobacco use is one of those things that's preventable. National news, the president touted falling gas prices during a virtual meeting with his economic team Friday. He says that the prices at the pump have consistently fallen for, quote, 38 days in a row. The Biden administration plans to continue this downward trend while also praising the use of electric vehicles and renewable energy. We've also been working to increase U.S. production. Today, we're producing 12 million barrels per day, and we're on track to hit near record highs. I've been working to make sure that when the price of oil comes down, the price at the pump comes down as well and comes down in real time. The good news is that's happening, but it's not happening fast enough. We made progress, but prices are still too high. Now, President Biden is still conducting business virtually as he recovers from his COVID diagnosis. His physician says his primary symptoms are a runny nose, loose cough and fatigue. And the national average for regular unleaded gas is down to $4.41 per gallon, while Michigan's average is still slightly above that at $4.49. That's down more than 10 cents, though, from last week. West Michigan seeing lower prices than some of the other parts of the state where costs are closer to $5. And the time now is a 8 11 and still ahead we may have lost a battle here today but we're not gonna lose this war a former trump official could be facing some jail time for defying congress a look at to how he got into his legal entanglement coming up and we want to wish a very happy birthday to kyler who is turning two years old and mabel she is turning two as well happy birthday to you both we will continue uh, we will celebrate your child too but you got to send an email to fox uh, mornings at fox 17 online.com breaking now from fox 17 news the shooting in Kalamazoo is still under investigation. Kalamazoo police have yet to identify a suspect. Anyone with any information is asked to contact the Kalamazoo Department of Public Safety or Silent Observer. We will continue to update this story all morning long and give you guys those updates as we get them. So please stick to Fox 17. Good morning, everybody. It's 815 on a Saturday, already the 23rd of July. We've had some thunderstorms around the area with extensive lightning and torrential rainfall, mainly across our extreme southern counties, Berrien, Cass, St. Joe, Branch counties. Uh, I'll show you that here in just a second. Not a whole lot in Grand Rapids. There's been a few other scattered showers and some storms around the Fox 17 viewing area, but not a lot. Most of it's been confined to those southwestern counties. We've got a couple of AM uh, thunderstorms out there more torrential rainfall and lightning in the southwestern portion of the state. It's not going to rain all day. We're going to break out into mostly sunny to partly cloudy skies. Going to be hot and somewhat humid today. Our temperatures will be driven up to around 90 degrees. Severe thunderstorms are going to be possible as we get into the, uh, we'll say mid to late evening hours and the overnight hours. So we'll watch out for a round of uh, severe storms I'm gradually less humid as we go through the day tomorrow. As we look at radar, uh, we still have a cluster of some showers and thunderstorms over the southern portion of Lake Michigan and still a few showers and thunderstorms over our southern counties as well. Here's a loop over the last couple of hours. There are more storms out here. These are likely not severe. There may be some uh, 40, 45 mile per hour gusts there, some torrential rainfall. But, you know, a lot of these storms have been plowing over the same areas over and over again this morning. We call that training of thunderstorms. It's like a rail car or a, or a bunch of uh, cars uh, on the train tracks. They just go over the same, they go down the same area, the same uh, set of uh, rails over and over. So hence the term training of thunderstorms. I wouldn't be surprised if there's some areas that end up with a couple, three, four inches of rain by the time all is said and done. We'll zoom in on this. These are just general rain showers now across Area south of I-84, Berrien County, Cass County, St. Joe County, Branch Hillsdale, Coldwater area. There may be a few rumbles of thunder in there as well, but they're not strong now. They're just some general rain showers. Temperatures, 70 in Three Rivers, 71 in Coldwater, 75 in Muskegon, 72 in Grand Rapids, and 73 in Fremont. 
and also Big Rapids there in Macosta County. Here's a loop over the last several hours. Look at the way these storms just formed and dove down here to the south and east. That yellow box, which does not include Michigan, it's only Indiana and Ohio. That's a severe thunderstorm watch box, but again, it's not for our area. There's another one out here. We expect the line of storms to form out here and then roll our way, but they likely won't get here until we get into probably after about 8, 9, 10 o'clock tonight. And if you were watching yesterday and you haven't seen the news of the weather in the last uh, several hours here, we were in the lowest threat category, a marginal threat category for tonight. That has been bumped up, not one level, but two. Now we're in an enhanced threat here. That's a number three category across a large portion of our area. This is for tonight. What are we talking about? If we assess and quantify that threat, I think hail tonight up to about an inch to an inch and a quarter is possible. Wind gusts, 60, 65, 70 mile per hour gusts will be possible in some of those storms tonight. Even an isolated tornado threat, maybe some brief week spin ups of an EF0 or an EF1. Our forecast for today, it's not going to rain all day. These storms will wrap up over the next couple of hours in those southwestern counties. We'll go to mostly sunny to partly cloudy skies. It's going to be hot and humid. Temperatures will move to about 90 degrees today with a southwest wind at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. Nice day to be at the lake. I was swimming in Grand Haven yesterday. 72 degrees. That water felt great. You could get in and enjoy it. No real cold feeling out there. No beach hazard risk today. No small craft advisories today. Waves today at their highest about two to three feet this afternoon with a southwest wind at about 10 to 20 miles per hour. So this warm front will move a little bit closer. So will this low pressure system. Watch as we get into the mid to late evening hours and we'll roll through till about the midday hours here or to the midnight hours. I should say we'll have a chance of some strong to severe thunderstorms moving in here. This is around midnight. That goes into Sunday morning. I think the real severe weather threat Sunday morning is out of here. There could still be a few lingering showers and storms till about midday on Sunday. Otherwise, we'll see some clearing later on Sunday and gradually less humidity through the day as well. High pressure builds in Sunday night. We're mostly clear Monday. We're mostly sunny with a nice cooler, drier, more comfortable air mass. So here's the severe weather threat as we get into tomorrow. You can see that threat is a minimal one. It's marginal and it shifts down to the south and east of Grand Rapids. This is for Sunday morning. So our biggest concern with the severe weather threat will be this evening and through the early portion of the overnight hours. Highs around 90 degrees today with a PM severe chance out there. That goes into uh, Sunday morning. A few lingering showers and thunderstorms on Sunday morning. Otherwise, some clearing through the second part of the day. 84 degrees there and eventually less humid by later in the day. Monday looks like a gorgeous day. Upper 70s to near 80 degrees with some sunshine. Lower 80s on Tuesday. More shower chances coming into play for Wednesday and Thursday. That's okay. We need the rain. We just want to avoid the severe weather. But we have a decent chance at seeing some widespread, somewhat prolonged severe weather as we get into the mid to late evening and part of the overnight hour. So that's what our team's going to be watching tonight. Lauren? We may have lost a battle here today, but we're not going to lose this war. A federal jury has found Steve Bannon guilty of contempt of Congress. He's a former Trump administration official who refused to speak with the January 6th committee. Bannon's verdict came after a five day trial and the jury returning with two guilty verdicts. He was held in contempt not only for his refusal to testify, but also his failure to provide investigators with relevant documents. Now, after nearly two days of hearing uh, evidence and witness testimony, the jury reached a unanimous verdict in less than three hours. Bannon did not take the stand or mount any defense. He is set to be sentenced on October 21st. According to federal law, Bannon faces a minimum a sentence of 30 days in jail, but he is also facing two years up to two years in prison, and he is not the only former Trump official who has refused to talk to the committee and has been held in contempt. Peter Navarro, a former Trump economic advisor, will face trial in November. Now, the Ukrainian government officials remain cautious over the grain export deal with Russia. The country's minister of foreign affairs says he welcomed the agreement with the Kremlin, but expressed doubt about whether the deal would work. Friday, Russia, Russia and Ukraine signed separate agreements with Turkey and the United Nations. It clears the way for millions of tons of Ukrainian and Russian grain and fertilizer to be exported. We have a deal. But uh, I don't think I don't know whether it will work. I mean, I hope it will. But having uh, experience with Russia and Minsk agreements um, of 2014 and 2015, I know that whatever you agree with Russia, whatever you agree on with Russia, in the end will not work 
may not work because they will interpret things in a completely different way. So I keep my fingers crossed that this will work, that ships will carry grain to world markets and prices will go down and people will have food to eat. But I'm very cautious and uh, because I have no trust in Russia. Both Ukraine and Russia are significant suppliers of, the, of food to the world. Uh, the deal comes as the ongoing war threatened food security around the globe with millions of people facing starvation. And the time now is 822 this morning is still ahead. Some incredible footage out of Israel. My voice went out of earlier and all I want to do is just tell you about this story. Now let's do what I love to do, head overseas, take a look at this. Fair warning if you hate jellyfish, but how do you hate jellyfish? They've invaded the waters off of northern Israel and uh, drone footage released by Israel's Parks and Nature Authority shows a massive swarm of jellyfish surrounding a boat in the waters of the Mediterranean Sea. Israel is in the midst of its annual jellyfish migration and the sea creatures typically drift close to the shores of the eastern Mediterranean. Now jellyfish tentacles can sting and in inject venom into humans, which usually results in mild to serious discomfort and in rare cases lead to extreme pain or even death. So people are being warned about visiting the beach while the creatures are migrating. Nah, you can leave. And the time now is 826 still ahead. Where did it all go? The plexiglass barriers were seemingly everywhere during the peak of the pandemic and helping to protect people from the viral spread. Now they are nowhere to be seen and we go searching for answers. And at the Monarch, our, the Monarch Beautiful blood, Butterflies has been put on the endangered species list. We'll tell you how you can help reverse their fate and keep them alive. Good morning. Thanks for choosing Fox 17 News to start your Saturday. I'm Lauren Edwards and we start this morning with some breaking news out of Kalamazoo. Nine people have been shot and we also uh, have our Michael Martin live on scene. Michael, thank you so much for your coverage. What can you tell us? Lauren, good morning. We don't know a whole lot at this point. What we do know, nine people shot after a gathering here overnight on Church Street in Kalamazoo. This is where neighbors tell us there were upwards of 100, 100 people here overnight in the road, hanging out uh, with each other, partying to some degree. A little bit after 2 a.m., so around 2.15 a.m., police got a call uh, reporting that shots were fired. They show up to this scene in the 1300 block of Church Street. They find two people with gunshot wounds. They took them to local hospitals, say those wounds. Last time that they, we've been able to hear an update from them, those two people were in stable condition. But now as they come back to the scene or as investigators stay here on scene and they're looking into what happened, they have seven more people show up to Kalamazoo area hospitals with gunshot wounds. Now, all of these people last time we checked and we haven't gotten an update in about three and a half, four hours, but they were in stable condition and those gunshot wounds were said to believe to be non-life threatening. So what we know so far, nine people injured after a shooting here on Church Street in Kalamazoo, a little bit after 2 a.m. Police say, it, uh, as the last time we checked, no suspect identified, no suspect under arrest. So if you have any information about what happened or who might be responsible for it, uh, you're asked to contact the Kalamazoo County Sheriff's Office. Uh, but again, nine people injured. We're gonna continue to check for updates in terms of how those nine people are doing. But again, no suspect in custody. And uh, again, we'll bring you those updates as soon as we possibly can. For now though, live in Kalamazoo, Michael Martin, Fox 17 News. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to a Saturday morning. We've had some uh, torrential rainfall across our southern counties with uh, some extensive lightning, a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings that have long since been canceled. But if we took radar and we use that to estimate rainfall totals, mainly across central and southern portions of Berrien County, where you've seen the blue there, that's estimating about a uh, couple of inches of rain, uh, and it may have the tendency to underestimate. So I think probably two to three inches of rain is uh, possible, has been possible there and already likely occurred across Berrien and Cass counties. Look at the bullseye.